Hey folks, I am really, really excited to bring you this video about our BARS Summer Reading Program. For those of you who don't know, BARS is an acronym that stands for Black America Reading Strongly. And we launched it with one clear goal, to improve the reading skills of black boys. Now, why black boys? Because right now, only 8 to 9% of black boys are reading at grade level by the 8th grade. That's unacceptable. And it's time we change that. So we kicked off the BARS program on June 1st and wrapped it up on September 1st. And I have to say the results were incredible. In this video, we're excited to highlight the top winners of this summer's program. But here's the best part. The program was such a success that we are turning it into a year-round initiative. We've got big plans. Our vision is to spark a reading renaissance in the black community, where reading becomes a favorite pastime for young black boys. Our message is simple. Our young men can excel at more than sports. They can thrive academically, too. If you're ready to enroll your child and join this movement, head over to LLJP.org. Look under issues, find the BARS program, and get your child signed up today. Now sit back and enjoy this video. You'll get to watch my daughter interview some of our BARS scholars, the young men who won the reading competition, along with their parents. It's inspiring, and I know you're going to love it. Now before I send you over to Chloe, Please go to Amazon.com, grab a copy of my book, Education and Justice, where I discuss the reading level of African-American boys and many other topics. And I show you how public schools mistreat African-American boys, but what we can do about it. So go over to Amazon.com, grab your copy of my book. All right. Without further ado, here is Chloe and our Bars Scholars. Hello, everybody. My name is Chloe Corbett, also known as the Duchess of Justice. I am one half of the Defiant Lawyers, where we provide legal analysis of trending politics, policies, personalities, and pop culture to empower each and every one of you all to defy this unjust legal system and nullify systemic racism. I am so happy to be here today. Uh, I want to welcome everyone who's viewing this video, and I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to introduce a special group of parents who are here to share their experiences as well as their son's experiences by going through our um, BARS summer reading program. So for those of y'all who may have seen my dad and Nassan on this channel, um, through our nonprofit, the Lazarus Law and Justice Project, we started a summer reading program called BARS, which stands for Black America Reading Strongly. Just a little bit of background about me. Ever since I was a kid, it was put on me how important reading is um, to me gaining knowledge, to be to me being successful, and to me being a well-rounded individual. And we know and statistics have shown the importance of reading, especially on young Black boys. So as we are in um, this position and through our YouTube channel and our nonprofit, we wanted to make sure that we are joining in on the conversation and making sure that young Black boys will be developed into young Black uh, males um, and to help them foster a, a love for learning and for knowledge, because that is the first step in stopping the school to prison pipeline. And as a criminal defense attorney, unfortunately, I see it every single day um, as someone who has had to represent um, both young Black boys in the justice system, as well as adult Black men in the justice system. And I can tell you that fostering a love of learning and a love of reading um, is one of the big ways that we can stop the school to prison pipeline. So I just want to thank each and every one of the parents uh, here today. And we're just going to have a simple conversation. So with that, I want to ask the parents to please introduce yourselves with your name and where you live. And let's start with Ms. Hendricks. Hey, my name is Carrie O. Hendricks. Um, I live in Thomasville, North Carolina. And do you want Anthony to introduce himself? Yes, please. My name is Anthony Hendricks and I am nine years old and I live in Thomasville, North Carolina. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. 
Okay, let's go to the parents of Taleo Edwards and Sebastian Edwards Borens. Hi, I'm Star K. Edwards, and um, we live in Los Angeles County, um, Culver City. And my name is Taleo. Mm, oh. I just turned 10. Happy birthday, Taleo. Mm. And who's beside you? My name is Sebastian, and I'm uh, eight. Nice to meet you, Sebastian. Hey. Uh, my name is Terry Borns. I'm the father of these two uh, wonderful boys. Thank you for joining us. And Anthony, how old are you? I am nine years old. Okay. So we have a good cross section of America. We have North Carolina, where I'm from originally, and we have California with the Edwards. Uh, so that is, we've covered all bases in this program. I, I want to ask each of you all, how did you first hear about uh, the BARS summer reading program? Um, I heard about the BARS program from my brother. Um, he I I'm assuming he watches the YouTube channel and he provided us with the information for the program. Okay. Wonderful. I heard um, about the program through the Defiant Lawyers um, YouTube channel. Do you, you also YouTube channel? How long have you been a, a viewer of the YouTube channel? I've been a viewer for about five or six months, actually. Okay. Uh, it's around springtime of this year. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for Thank watching. You. And do you know how long your brother may have watched the YouTube channel, Ms. Hendrick? No, no ma'am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so as I explained before, we started this program as a way to provide reading enrichment for young um, Black boys and African-American males in this country. Um, and I want to know from each of you all, why do you feel that it's important um, for you to sign up your sons to participate in this reading program? Um, well, I signed up Anthony because I want him to continue to enjoy reading um, and I want him to have people that he can share the journey with because I feel like um, when it's just me, him and dad, sometimes it gets a little boring, the same routine. Um, so it's nice to just mix it up and give him different avenues so that he doesn't get bored in learning. Had Anthony ever participated in a summer reading program before this one? Um, no, not. We we just did it on our own. Nothing that he was directly in, but we do reading every summer. Okay. Okay. And uh, for the Edwards Borings family? So um, I thought it was important to sign um, boys up for this reading program because, um, first of all, we were looking for something, um, a, a, some specific reading programs to get them involved in. Um, the boys, uh, my boys were, our boys were starting a reading program for the summertime. But then when I was watching the, um, your YouTube channel, um, I was like, oh, okay, well, they don't have to just be in one reading program. And this, this program was specifically for boys of color. And so I was like, okay, we definitely have to jump on this right now, um, to make sure that they're getting as many resources as possible. And I'm a very res resourceful person. So sometimes I just go digging for resources and then I try to join as much, as many as possible. I've always been that, that type of person. So, um, I love that it was geared specifically for um, for young boys and young boys of color. So, yes. Yeah, we specifically divide, uh, we specifically designed the program for young black boys, um, because, like I said before, we know the importance of um, fostering their learning in them while they're young. I mean, these are the perfect ages, eight, nine, ten. This is the time to start fostering that love of learning. Um, so that it can continue to develop as they go into young adulthood, young adulthood, et cetera. And Mr. Borens, I want to ask you specifically, you're a Black father raising yes. Black sons. Uh, why do you feel it was important to have your sons in the reading program and just to foster a love of reading in general? Well, uh, you know, I figured that, you know, any little thing would help, you know, as Black people, as such young people. Uh, to uh, learn how to read because, uh, you know, it's very important to have other avenues 
uh, because sometimes the school system they only go so far. So you have to uh, get somewhat a little more edge to uh, help your uh, kids uh, better in reading. Yes, that's so true. And um, have you noticed, I want to ask you all, with the schools that you all, you, that your children are in, um, do they provide reading opportunities or reading programs? Or did you feel like, as Ms. Edwards said, there needed to be resources or additional resources? Um, they do provide, um, they give you a lot of, uh, at the school he goes to, which is predominantly white, um, or Caucasian, I should say, um, they provide a lot of materials that they want you to access on your own, which is okay. We're okay with that. But I like to uh, be on the same page to make sure that we're kind of teaching consistently the same thing so the children don't get confused. Um, so that's the only thing that I don't like about it is it's like they just give you the information and then that's it. It's not like a follow through. Um, now, we did do a program called Class Dojo where we did tutoring um, and they worked on some reading there. But that was, uh, you know, that was something that we paid for to do. That wasn't just a resource that that was given by the school. Mm. And um, I want to ask you, Ms. Hendricks, when did you develop a love for reading and why do you feel that it's important for your son to develop it as well? Um, I developed a love for reading, I would say, uh, probably when I was a teenager, um, more so just because I, I had a little bit more of a difficult life. And I developed a love for reading by just reading the Bible. Because with the trauma that I was going through, that was just something that got me through. So that's where I developed my love for reading. But I know how important it is um, to be able to read um, for anything that you want to accomplish today. So that's why I try to push him um, to work so hard to read and to do this every day. I love that you mentioned a good book. There's no other greater book. Um, there's no other greater source of knowledge um, that we can read, especially as Black people, um, the Word of God. Um, as you all know, we are we are Christians, we are Christ followers. So I, I love that you mentioned that the Bible is what got you um, develop your passion for reading um, and continue that. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, what about you, Ms. Edwards? So um, I can't even remember the time that I started loving reading. I've, I've loved reading all of my life. Um, I have uh, was always just a um, a really hardworking student, um, an honor student. Um, I just, just always loved the, the reading, um, love reading. Um, I'm just trying to think. I just, I think I could kind of just remember around third grade, third or fourth grade is when I really started loving re reading. And when there were specific like books, like Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, those, when we had to read books for, Books like that around third and fourth grade. That's when I really like really started le learning to the love of reading. I would say the Bible as well because I uh, went to Christian school uh, when I was in elementary school and middle school, and then I ended up going ended up going to Catholic school. So we were reading the Bible Bible there, and then being heavily involved in church uh, with reading the Bible um, mm -hmm. as well. So I, I do love how Mrs. Um, Hendricks <laughs> brought that up as well. Um, so I, um, I, I love that, um, my boys are starting to foster that love as well. Like I, like I remember having when I was their age and I just want them to be able to go into, um, having high standards of, uh, for academics as well. Like I, I've always had. So I want to hear from, I want to hear from the kids. I'm going to put you all on the spot. Uh, Anthony, let's start with you. Can you tell us what your favorite book that you read this summer was? Uh, my favorite book this summer that I read, it was called Ghost. It's about a, a boy who runs track and he talks about his life and he talks about a lot of relatable things. Wow. Okay. Do you Are you into sports as well? Do you run track? I used to. I used to you play used basketball, to? run track. I oh, play baseball and I used to play soccer and football. Wow. And you run track now. You run track now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that was your favorite book that you read this, this summer. And it was called Ghost. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Uh, what about you, Taleo or Sebastian? Uh, my favorite book was Dog Man, the Garlic Shatter. 
Okay. Dogman. Yeah. I think they're making that a movie. I could be wrong, but I think I saw yeah, that they're actually yeah, making yeah. that a movie. Yeah. So that would be pretty interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for showing the book to us. What about you, Sebastian? My um my book was Snail at School. Snail at School? Yeah. Can you tell us what that book was about? Um so there's a snail at school. I had a lot of adventures and the teacher didn't believe the snail and and he was going on a long quest. Wow. So it's it's sort of like an adventure book as well. Yeah. Okay. And I want to tell the viewers that these young men, they all uh, won certificates of achievement for completing the program and for all of the books that they read. And I also want to point out that Taleo, he actually won an award for the book report. So we asked all of the students to write a book report. He wrote his book report and he won that award. So congratulations to you, Taleo, for that, for the, the book report award. Pat, pat, pat. And I also want to point out that Anthony won an award as well. He won an award for the most books read for the program um, this summer. So congratulations to Anthony as well and all of the young men that participated in the program. Uh, we were so excited to to meet you all and, and speak about that program. Um, as we come to a little bit of a, of a close, I do wanna ask the parents, what benefits uh, do you see in your children participating in this program and just reading over the summer? Um, well, I see the benefit of, you know, them just gaining more knowledge over the summer because a lot of times the kids are not reading, they're not being active. So when they go back to school, they have lost so much that they've learned. Um, so this is just a way to keep him learning, keep him growing, keep him on a, the right track um, to continue to advance uh, as he should be. Yes. And Anthony, let me ask you this. Why do you like to read? <laughs> I put you on the spot. I know. You want me to come back to you? Yeah. Okay. I'll come back. I got to think about that. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like it's good to think before you speak sometimes, too. So that's great. <laughs> okay, uh, Miss Edwards, let's go to you. What benefits do you see for your sons participating in the program? So um, the benefit that I um, see my sons benefiting, uh, benefiting in this program is um, by having fostering even, uh, even more in our um, fostering. Oh, let me start over. <laughs> the benefits that I see by my sons um, being in this program is um, fostering a love of reading even more so and by um, having a more of a support system with um, having there there were more there were other families that were a part of the program that um, we saw like um, information that they were giving on our group Facebook page of what they were doing with their kids, which was really being it was very motivating for us to continue to um, want to even do more um, by seeing the other parents doing doing those things for their children as well. So um, I really saw that as as a beneficial, um, um, I shouldn't say a beneficial beneficial thing, but I saw that as beneficial for for us um, pertaining to the program. Yeah, that support and that community is so important. Um, and we did have a Facebook group. My mom, who's not up here, but uh, she was very, very on top of making sure that she stayed in touch with you all, uh, making sure that she updated you all. And you all also participated greatly in the Facebook group as well. So that was so good to see just all of the involvement of the parents in the Facebook group and creating that community. That's what we that's one of the things that we wanted to do with our program as well. Um, bring people from different parts of the country. Uh, but with the same goal, which is helping and reaching our young Black boys. So that was good to see. Uh, Mr. Borens, did you want to answer that question? What benefits did you see for your sons as well? Uh, just improvement of reading. Uh, it was a, um, 
it was good to see them improve in their reading uh, uh, throughout the summer. And uh, it, it helped um, tremendously. That's the goal. <laughs> I mean, that is the goal, improving the reading, actual seeing the actual results yeah. of spending time reading, uh, of the repetition of reading. So I, I love that answer. Taleo or Sebastian, did you want to talk about why you love to read? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> I know, I put y'all on the spot. You want to tell her what you do at school, even on recess? Mm -hmm. On lunchtime, with books? <laughs> well, y'all can y'all can think about it, and maybe you can answer it for yourself. Just why during just this summer reading, why you started to love to read? Okay. Do you have an uh, an answer, Anthony? Uh, yeah, I thought about it for a little bit. Um. Okay. Well, the reason I love to read is because a lot of the books and they can be really interesting and not only math can help you learn, but a lot of other things in reading can help you learn too because if you're getting a job, you have to know how to read to be able to um like sign stuff to get the job. Okay. He said you you need to learn how to read so you can get a job, which is important, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I love that answer, Anthony. Yes. Yes. <laughs> reading um, is so helpful with <laughs> getting a job, applying for jobs, um, providing for yourself. So that was such a great answer. Um, and before we go, so Miss Edwards, you are an author, correct? Yes. Did you want to just tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Yes, I have um, a book out. Um, it came out a little over a year ago. It was last year, um, 2023. It's called The Refined Being. Um, I can grab it really quick. If that's sure, okay. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, it's called The Refined Being um, by Star K. Edwards. I know it's kind of a bright light there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it shows like a woman on a mount mountaintop here. Um, and then praising God. With mm. uh, God's glory shining down on her, yes. So, awesome. and it I talks about that. some uh, just different life circumstances that I um, went through, I have overcome in my life, and then it shows people, other people, how to look into their own lives to to be able to overcome um, different um, life circumstances, and just um, to know that God is always there and He helps us get through these things in our life. Because so, I mean, living living on Earth is hard, but um, <laughs> we have God God there that um, we must believe in um, in Jesus Christ and um, and believe that He's always there to get us through these things. So, okay. thank you for sharing that. Jesus is the reason for the season. Um, where can where can people find the book? Um, my book is available on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, uh, Walmart, and Target. And Thank yeah, you <laughs> Thank you so much. So is there any last parting words that anyone wants to say before we end the video? Um, well, I would just like to say thank you to you guys for um, even starting a program. Um, I know it's the beginning, so I know that it's going to be better and better each time. Um, I, I hope that we have more participants. I am surely putting the word out because uh, this is a great pro program for uh, Black boys. It really is. So I'm so grateful to you guys, and I look forward to what's to come. Thank you so much. From your lips to God's ears. And yes, this was our first <laughs> time doing this. This was our first summer doing it. And um, just the participants and the boys that we have, we're so grateful for. But we do want to continue to expand. And thank you so much, Ms. Hendricks, for sharing the word, spreading the word and for even enrolling Anthony into the program. We, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. <laughs> Ms. Edwards, Mr. Borens. Yeah, so I just wanna, just wanna thank you from the bottom of our hearts for allowing us to be a part of the program. I, I'm so thankful that I found the Defiant Lawyers YouTube channel with all the information that you all put on the channel um, weekly. Um, and then for, for me to see, um, 
that this program was starting, I jumped on immediately and, and for my boys. And um, I just, just thank you all for, for this because you don't see too many programs like this, reading programs like this, specifically for our culture as well. And then with the history of what we know about reading and our culture and um, in regards to boys, Thank you for, for just knowing how important that was and not just saying, oh, these are the statistics, but doing something about the statistics. <laughs> so um, we just thank you for that and for this community support. And we look forward to continuing to um, and being a part of the program as the boys grow as, and as your program grows too. And just hope so many other boys and children will be a part of the program. Thank you so much, Ms. Edwards. It's been a pleasure getting to know each and every one of you all. Um, for um, I, We commend you all for placing your, your son in this program um, and really believing in what we're trying to do. Um, I don't want to leave you out, Mr. Borens, if you want to say any final words. Oh, no, she, she said it, <laughs> she said <Okay>. it all. <laughs> like I, said, I, just re I do recommend uh, uh, the program, and I will uh, put the word out as well. Well, in conclusion, I just want to thank all of you all for participating, for um, agreeing to do this interview and expansion and, so, and solutions. That is what I wanna say in conclusion. We are working on expanding this program to try to reach every young black male in this country so that we can stop that school to prison pipeline um, and really empower our young black youths. And we're also wanting to offer solutions. And uh, that is what this program, what we're aiming to do. So thank you all so much, everyone who's watching this video. Thank you so much to our wonderful parents who participated and your children. And with that, we're going to go and I will see you all in the next one.